Hi everyone, it's Fuelstrom. LumaFusion 3.0 is out now and it's just a really huge update as I mentioned already yesterday in my video. I've been switching back and forth between Final Cut Pro and LumaFusion but now, I mean the past months I've been just using LumaFusion because it's just so easy. I film everything with my iPhone, I airdrop it to my iPad and I just edit it in a very short time and it's just awesome. But now this update really completes the whole experience with very important updates updates that kind of still brought me back to Final Cut Pro before, but now definitely I'm going to just continue using my iPad. Hey, let's have a look at what's new in LumaFusion 3.0. Now there are several new features and tweaks here in LumaFusion 3.0. I'll be discussing most of them, uh, but the top two are definitely the most important ones and I'll start with them first. And those are, first of all, external drive editing and video stabilization. Those two things are just awesome. The first thing is external drive editing. So this here is my RAV Power SSD and it's connected with my uh, USB-C iPad Pro. This is very important that this is only supported on iPads that have a USB-C port or a Thunderbolt port. In other words, currently, at the date of recording, this is the iPad Pros since the iPad Pro 2018 and the iPad Air 4. Lightning iPads sadly don't support it, but that, that, I think that is really a hardware issue. Now, the good thing is that most of the other features are for all iPads, so don't worry, the rest of this video is still useful. Now, next, you have to click on Add Link to Folder. Then you can just tap on the thing you want to add. In this case, this is my SSD, and click Done. Now, I already did this before, as you can see already here, my RAV power is already connected. And so this thing will be listed all the time. If your SSD isn't connected, uh, if you click on this, it will just be an empty folder telling you to connect your hard drive. So this is actually very useful because it's, you don't have to link it every time. All right, so let me just add this one over here to this timeline. Now, as you'll notice here, I'll just play this. It's a very much handheld video. This is filmed with an iPhone 11, but somehow the stabilization didn't seem to work at that moment. So, okay, I'm clearly walking here and uh, this would be too nice if this is stabilized. So what I'll do now is I can just double tap this and I have a fifth option here at the bottom called stabilize. So this is very useful. Tap on this and they have now st lock and load stabilization by core melt. If you just turn this on, it will track the dominant motion of your video. I've just experimented with just leaving the default option and if I hit play now, that's a huge difference when it comes to the original. There we go. The last part, of course, we have to cut off. That isn't really something that I would use in a real video. So this is how smooth it is, much smoother than it was before. So let me just add this here to my timeline again. Again here, handheld, um, kind of stabilized, but not really ideal to be nice if it's a smooth video, especially for a travel vid. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll double tap, then stabilize, just turn this on again. It will track it, which is very fast, um, without heating. Uh, personally, with my bit older MacBook, everything used to heat up. The, the fans blow when stabilization happens. This is all just without any fans. But uh, if you want to have a stronger stabilization or a lighter one, so it looks a little bit more natural, you can just adjust everything here. Or advanced strength, advanced scale, everything here, you can just change yourself. This is very, very good very much reminds me of Final Cut Pro. So let's have a look at the result. I didn't change anything. This is the, the default uh, 0 0.70 strength. This here is the result. Personally, I found this even better than expected. I expected a bit of, um, still a bit of shaking or some weird distortion that is barely noticeable here. So really awesome, awesome uh, video stabilization. But hey, every stabilization feature that you have, let's say you have a whole setup here, you can save as a preset. So along light, medium, strong, you can save this as a new preset. Now I find it very logical that presets are here because presets are everywhere. You can save anything as a preset in LumaFusion. Text, for example, I really like that option. They can like have a title and just reuse that kind of title as a template thanks to those presets. Uh, definitely, um, yeah, something I really like here in LumaFusion. All right, so that is stabilization and external drive editing. So everything right now, everything I've been doing right now, I mean, nothing has been cached on my iPad. My iPad, these videos have not been imported. 
And the best way of checking this is every time you scrub or you play your video, you see the light flickering on your SSD or on your hard drive. So that's very cool that it really doesn't take any space. Now, when you're editing from your hard drive, you can also export to your hard drive. Now, this was already possible before, but again, it would take space on your iPad while rendering, which means that eventually, if you don't have space, you would not be able to save your video. So from now on, you can just hit share, movie. This here has been simplified, by the way. We can also add a destination. So let's just add a destination and choose uh, files. And just move this over here. Okay, you also have other options just in case you're wondering. Let's just go back. Files is here now. I said export. And I can choose, I want to export straight to my RAV Power SSD. I'll hit export. And now it's writing the movie straight to my SSD without using any space on my iPad. So Right, that is done. And so now if I go to my Files app again, it's here. I can just watch my video, all stabilized. So that is how easy it is. So external drive editing, stabilization, and export to external drive. There's are three huge features, very important features here for LumaFusion. Now there's one more important thing. So let's say I have a title over here and I move it all around and I want to use this. I'm going to put this back in the middle. Sometimes it's really hard to get it in the middle and you would have to like tap this until you have the correct number over here. That's a bit frustrating. So, and sometimes you're using this and it just doesn't want to, like if you let go of the thing, it jumps again. Okay, now it doesn't. Instead, you can from now on just tap this pencil and just type the number 50. And now we're back to the middle. So this here, it's a very simple thing, but it is definitely a comfort now when it comes to uh, editing pixel by pixel here in LumaFusion 3.0. Now these pencils have been added everywhere where there's a slider. So like in stabilization, I'm not sure if you noticed, but there were also pencils there. So you can just really just tap the pencil, type the number, and that's it. You could even calculate if you want. All right, next is about sound. Something about, I don't really edit sound, although I will experiment with it now. So if I sound different, it's because I use this now for my video. But if you double tap on your video and you also have the audio section over here, uh, you do have now a graphic equalizer. So first of all, I'm not sure if you just saw it, but this here is new. That's really nice. And the graphic equalizer as well. So you could like drag these things to, to change certain frequencies. I have, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Um, but you can just use it. If you're used to using this on Final Cut Pro, for example, or other video editing software, you also have it now here in LumaFusion. Definitely nice. And again, of course, you can save it again that you can save the presets just in case you sound better with a certain equalizer setting that from now you can just save this and use it again in a future video. Now there's one more thing that is very promising also for the future and that is uh, third party plugins. So tap the add plugin to add an organized third plugin, third party plugin effect. So if you can tap here, you can add plugins. Now currently I don't have anything over here, but those are things you have to download. But this is very promising because what I want to see in the future is also third party uh, transitions and text options or text effects. They're really cool if they will add that in the future. Now one more new feature that is definitely worth mentioning right now is a very, again, a very simple option, but a very important, powerful option is for example, let's say you're working in a video and you have multiple layers over here and you just want to check the layerings, check if everything is correct, then yeah, you'd need to scroll up and down all the time or you would need an external monitor to push your video off there and then have your full screen as a yeah, as a timeline uh, but instead of using that instead of having an external monitor you can now just grab this middle thing over here just grab this just look at this you can just resize this thing for example here if you need a huge explorer to see everything that you filmed or to have a bigger overview better overview that's it you can just drag this and everything will resize. All right, so those were the new features of LumaFusion 3.0. Uh, if you haven't used LumaFusion before, definitely check out their channel. They have many tutorials over there where you can find, we can discover all of the features. Personally, I do find it worth the investment uh, as I use my iPad as my main video editing machine. So yeah, that's my personal opinion. What do you think of LumaFusion, especially also of these new updates? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.